Hello, everybody. We are here again uh, with another chapter in Rinaldo Chess Lessons. Today, we are going to be commenting uh, the round number seven, the Armageddon player between uh, uh, Magnus Carson and Fabiano Caruana in order to, uh, to do the tie break in, her, in, in their initial match. Okay? Uh, in this case, Magnus was playing with black pieces. Remember, in the Armageddon, a draw means the victory for black. So Fabio was playing with 10 minutes against 7 minutes uh, of Magnus and uh, let's see the game, okay? So Fabio opened with e4 and uh, Magnus responds with e5. This is a, a pretty logical uh, option uh, considering that with a draw, uh, black wins uh, the tiebreak, okay? Uh, Noga Sicilian defense or, or, or something more sharp. So knight f3, knight c6, and here we have the the Ruy Lopez with bishop b5, and Magnus play knight f6. Okay, this move is known as the Berlin defense, probably one of the most solid ways to equalize the game against the Ruy Lopez. So Fabi Castle, knight takes on e4, and now rook e1. Okay, with rook e1, really, why wants to kick the pieces on the board? Okay, the alternative here will be play the end game, okay, with d4, knight d6, bishop takes, pawn takes, uh, Pound takes on e5, knight f5, and after the, the trade of queens, okay, we, 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 we have the, an ending, okay, where I have a majority on the king side, uh, this four versus three, but really, in general, lines is pretty difficult, the mobilization of this majority, and also the central pawn is going to be blocking the, the data square bishop. Uh, usually, it's very difficult for white in this position penetrate in black's territory, despite black don't have the, the right to cast. Okay, so the, uh, those positions used to be very balanced and difficult for white to create an unbalance. So uh, Fabi auction, okay, wants to kick the queens on the board okay, in order to play a, a more unbalanced game because he, he cannot make a draw. So knight d6, knight takes on e5, bishop d7, and now bishop f1, okay. uh, keeping the pieces. So Magnus simplified, and after rook takes, short castle. Despite all the, int the intention by Fabi to, to kick the queens on the board and to have some chance to play for the victory, usually these positions are uh, very difficult for white to create a balance because the pawn structure is completely symmetrical. We have three versus three on the king side and four versus four on the queens. So uh, here white plays knight c3. Uh, another option would be take the center with, with d4. And now to equalize the game, black should try to play d5 as soon as possible with this maneuver, knight e8, uh, trying to play uh, d5. In this case, white can play d5 first, but after bishop c5, black will be ready to play d6, stopping the pawn and having the bishop out of the pawn chain. In that position, white will have a slight advantage of a space, okay? But in general, the position is still uh, balanced, okay? Let's see what happened in the game. Knight c3, knight e8, Okay, trying to play c6, d5, for example. Now knight d5 chasing the bishop. Bishop d6 blocking the d pawn, but this is temporarily because the knight on d5 will be chased by the pawn. So rook e1, c6, I have to move the knight back. And now bishop e7 preparing d5. And here, this is important moment. Uh, Fabi plays c4, setting a trap. Okay, because now uh, d5 directly will be a mistake. Okay, Magnus continue with knight c7 preparing d5. But in case of d5, why can capture and after all the trades, the capture on d5 wins a pound because the queen is overloaded, uh, protecting d5 and the bishop on e7. Okay, so let's go back. Knight c7 preparing d5 in better conditions. So now b3 enabling the b2 a square for, for the data square bishop. So intermediate move, attacking the rook, and now bishop a3. This is a active defense, control play, okay? And now rook e8 and bishop d6. This idea is very interesting. White is trying to block the black queen side to avoid the connection of the rook, okay? To create an uncoordination on the black pieces. So, and also he is playing an interesting uh, exchange sacrifice that can create the unbalance needed for white in order to win a decisive game in the Armageddon stage. Uh, so black, in this case, the, the world champion didn't capture the rook, and he played in a more solid way with rook e8, playing against the blocker on the d6 square, because if black managed to remove the blocker, eventually 
there is a possibility to connect the rooks and to complete the development of the queens. This is very important. Uh, the sample variant in case of the capture of the change will be queen takes, rook e6, remove to remove the blocker, but after knight f5, why can develop a very strong initiative because there is a lot of intersection points in, in the position for the white pieces, and the defense here can be very difficult for black in the practice. The engine says that the position is, is balanced, but playing a blitz game, no increment, uh, very deep. Okay, so let's go back, uh, rook e6, c5, and this uh, apparently was the uh, an important mistake in the game. It's a pretty logical move because why create the outputs on d6 to establish permanent blocking there and also enable c4 for the knight to reinforce the square on d6. But the trouble is that the outputs on d6 can be challenged immediately uh, uh, with knight e8, okay? Uh, putting pressure on the bishop with the knight. So now bishop c4 uh, attacking the rook, but really this don't represent any trouble because black have pawn to play on the rook on the corner as well. So knight takes. Pound takes, and here finally, uh, black uh, accept the challenge, capturing the rook on a1. And after uh, queen takes, now uh, rook takes on d6. In this specific case, uh, really this move with knight f5 uh, don't have the same effect because black can simply play rook f6, blocking the diagonal and avoiding the checkmate with the intersection pawn on g7. Okay. So after rook takes on d6, uh, Fabi play queen e5, and now we are going to see a very practical decision because here we have a lot of threats. The, the background of black is weak, okay? So there is some uh, background things here, and also the knight f5 move is still available. So for that reason here, Magnus play a very practical move, uh, doing a positional exchange sacrifice in order to close all the lines for the last coordination and, and, and also after the capture of the rook, the pawn will be to square away of the knight, controlling the knight, uh, the knight jones. Okay? The, the disadvantage of this structure is that the bishop is being blocked, but black can play uh, just b6 and develop the, the last coordination to b7 or a6 later. So d4. Okay, move black, knight f5, for example, inviting black to capture to get the background. Black can simply play queen f8 to square away of the knight, uh, avoiding the background mate, attacking the knight, and protecting g7. So this will be a multitasking move. Okay, let's go back to see what happened in the game. d4, now b6, enabling the last squares for the queen's side bishop, h4. Now Fabi is just trying to generate complications in a holeless position because it's a, it's a pound down. And also, this is bishop versus knight. At the moment, really, black don't have any central pawn of the same color of the bishop. So the bishop seems to be bad, but, you know, uh, black will have the possibility to activate the bishop. He's doing that immediately. Bishop a6, queen f4, queen d7, to enable the d a square for the rook. So knight g4, y is trying to accumulate pieces on the king side to, to, to create some attacking chance, or so rook d8, ready to capture the pawn on d4. Now knight e5. The pawn cannot be captured because there is a counterplay on the on the pawn on f7. Black have to be very careful. Queen c7, one square away in the diagonal of the knight used to be pretty good. So queen g4. Now c5, hitting the base of the knight, okay, to to create a uh, stabilization in the output on e5. Rook c1, okay. The the pawn cannot be captured because there is a tactical trick here. The pawn on c5 is spin. So queen d6, removing the, the queen of the pylon of the rook. Queen h5, attacking on f7 again. Queen c7. Yeah, at this phase of the game, you know, players are just trying to, uh, you know, to, to, to create some threats and a kind of waiting, waiting move games, okay, just to see who overreact first. Okay, queen g4, I'll be come back, and now a6, useful waiting move, enabling this square to avoid future... Uh, background mate. Also, the pawn on c5 cannot be captured because the knight will be hanged. So here before, increasing the pressure on the on the pin on c5, and now rook d5. Okay, uh, protecting the pawn using the rook, rook c3. Uh, this is a thematic way to transfer the pieces to reinforce the attack on the king side. And now queen e7. Okay, here, uh, why cannot win the pawn? Because the knight will be hanging. Take, take. 
it raised some pounds. And now Rogitri really, it's very interesting to see how Fabi is trying to complicate the game because really he managed to transfer uh, all the pieces to the Kings. So this increased the complexity of the game. Now F5, okay, attacking the queen, um, depending the pawn on G7 through the seven run. So queen H5, pawn takes on D4. Uh, the knight is hanging now because it's, it's now basically why lose the output. So knight C6 to win a tempo, attacking the queen. And here queen F7 to offer the queen trade. White capture on A6. And now here, uh, well, under time pressure for sure, uh, Magnux play a, a very logical move, but really was a mistake. Okay, the pass pounds must be pushed, and especially if the rook is behind, depending on the pound. As the Taras rules suggest that the pass pound should be supported by the okay, under time pressure, Fabi overlooked. So Fabi continued with queen d2 to stop the pass the advance of the pass pound. But here we have this in uh, interesting uh, tactic. Rook takes on g7, and after queen takes, queen takes on e6, uh, queen f7, and now knight e7 check. The point is that when black move the king, why can trade queens capture the rook and will be on time to to stop the pawn? Let's see the bear. In f8, here we have an in between move. Okay. Uh, Takes, takes. Now, uh, knight takes the rook, and when the pawn is ready to be promoted, the knight can block. Okay, here, black can try to reinforce the promotion with bishop e2, uh, inviting white to capture the bishop to deflect the knight. But white can simply play f3, and after the promotion in this endgame, really, if white managed to uh, remove the pawn, okay, and get the corner with the king, will be a theoretical draft because this lateral pawn should be in the same color of the bishop to be able to win this position, okay? So the, the unique thing that white have to do is uh, remove the pawn and get the corner to, to create a theoretical draw position, okay? Uh, that is known uh, as a fourth, okay? So, well, Fabi regroup the queen to stop the pass pawn. Okay, now uh, here, uh, queen f6, okay? Uh, Magnus is uh, trying to look for some invasion squares, but Okay, uh, overlook the next fork. Uh, knight before attacking the rook and the bishop. Um, yeah, it's amazing because after this mistake, now the trade and the pound point. Um, this position is uh, is really pretty balanced. Okay, black can capture the the pound, but after queen c4, the trouble is that white pieces are well coordinated and there is a lot of checks in the position. So b2, and now here uh, h5. Uh, this move, okay, he's trying just to to remove the the pawn of the attack of the queen and, and to increase the pressure on g7. A bit more accurate will be rook e3 to put pressure, increase the pressure on the king. Okay, so let's see h5, rook d1 check in h2. Now rook d4, okay, attacking the queen and trying to do the check on h4. So check first in a7, and now here. Uh, Queen C1. Uh, after this move, uh, Black have some chance, okay, trying to push uh, the pass pound. But okay, Magnus play rook d4. The way to play of Magnus is understandable because he only needs a draw. So he's just trying to simplify the position, changing pieces of equal value, and that will be a no to, to, to win the tiebreak. Okay, so really he is not playing for the big. After rook takes, rook the take, pound takes, this is mission accomplished. The rooks disappear and the the trade of the queens will be inevitable. So, okay, queen c5 to capture the pawn on a7. So, after queen f5 takes, yeah, there is some checks here, but after the capture, now, uh, yeah, uh, Magnus won the, the tiebreak because really, why don't have any, any winning chance in this position? Okay, so, uh, yeah, the the, 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 the the game really was a roller coaster with a lot of ups and downs, but very interesting to see how uh, the, the, the opening selection by Magnus trying to play a, a solid uh, defense okay, against the real Lopez because he knew that he needs only the, okay, he needs only a draw and he managed to uh, accomplish that. Okay, so very interesting game. Um, yeah, uh, that.
that was the result of, of this uh, interesting tie break between the actual world champion and the and the and the second best player in the world, uh, Fabiano Carvalho. So, well, uh, with this, we finish uh, with this analyze. Uh, don't forget like and subscribe if you enjoy the content. Um, hope to see you soon in a new video.